exactly is misyar? Misyar uh, is the a marriage that takes place when a man and woman obviously agree to marry and the woman agrees to give up some of the rights and the privileges that the Sharia makes obligatory upon the man. And that's why it's the ease marriage, the marriage of ease. The reason why this phenomenon began 25 years ago, I, when I say began, I, I mean it became common or more common, was that there was and there still is uh, a larger percentage of women who wanted to get married but could not find a husband compared to the percentage of men who wanted to get married and could not find a wife. So spinsterhood increased in the women of that region. And many women were simply not finding a husband. And as their ages increased, and as we are aware, marriage is based upon, a lot of it is based upon one's looks and one's age and so forth. So as one's age increases, the prospects diminish. And so uh, people started saying that, you know, some people started saying that, look, I don't mind, you know, marrying, uh, some of the, the men of that region said, uh, I don't mind marrying a second uh, wife, but I cannot afford a second wife financially. And it so happened that many of these ladies are career ladies and they have jobs and they have an income. So they're not, they're not interested in a husband for money, but they want a husband for companionship, for what Allah has made halal between a man and a wife, and maybe even to start a family. And so they would say, I don't mind you, don't pay anything. I'll take care of my rent. I don't need you to take care of my rent, but I want a husband. And so the condition was put that the husband does not have to, for example, take care of the wife Now, financially. Now, once you open this door, the market becomes a free for all. And so men and women, each one of them, begin to negotiate, you know, the men are offering less and less, and the women are agreeing to whatever is being offered for whatever their reasons might be. And notice here, of course, that Messiah marriages, they do have the wali, and they do have the witnesses, and they do have, you know, a mahar, sometimes this is token mahar, because the mahar, by unanimous consensus, the mahar can be small or large, yani there's no ikhtilaf amongst the ulama. The mahar, if the husband and wife agree, it can be one dollar, one rial, one lira, uh, and if the husband and wife agree, it can be, yani one mil, if they want to, and if it would be a type of isra for many of us, but one million dollars, I mean, technically it's halal. So, if the husband and wife agree that the mahar is one dollar, and I'm not gonna pay you any support after this marriage, and we will be husband and wife. And the woman agrees to this. This is a type of misyar. Now, this began, as I said, you know, a few decades ago, and an industry was born where matchmakers would pair potential partners, and each side would offer what they're willing to negotiate on. So a man would go to this partner maker, the middleman, the middle person, it became an industry. You would pay, you know, hundreds of dollars to the middle person. And this middle person would compile the res resumes of the men and the re resumes of the woman and would negotiate and agree. So men would say, for example, that I can only give one night of the week. I don't have time uh, to, to spend. I want one night of the week and I'll give this much per month for rent. And the woman, uh, for whatever reason, would also say, okay, you know what, I'm fine with only one night and the rest you can spend with your other wife and uh, I'm not looking for a traditional marriage. Uh, and some men would say, I will spend full time, but I'm not going to give any money. And so the woman might have plenty of wealth. She might have inherited wealth. She might run her own business. She might be a career lady and the man has no job. And she wants a, a husband and an actual family to start. So she will agree to take on the finances as long as the husband becomes a husband to her. So all of this opens up the door to Missyah. So to summarize what is misyar, misyar basically means, and this is of course a modern term, it's not a fiqhi term, is a type of marriage in which the woman, and it's always the woman in the misyar marriage, uh, because the, 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 the burden of time and the burden of finances is on the man. So if the woman agrees to drop either time or finances, or a portion of time or finances, or complete time and finances, basically no expectations, and simply agrees to have a person in her life, a man uh, who will become her husband, uh, and they agree to this before the marriage, and it is solidified, and the marriage takes place with the wali, with the witnesses, everything is there, this is what is known as misyar. Now there's multiple angles to look at, 
when I, when I discuss this. And that's the way I answer questions. I don't give a simple uh, answer because I want us to understand what is going on here. The first way to, to begin this answer is to quickly do a summary of what have our modern ulama said. Well, a quick survey will show you that a large majority, overwhelming majority of scholars and fatwa councils have said that it is halal, but many of them have said it is halal but discouraged. And some have said it is halal and neither is it encouraged nor is it discouraged. So halal mubah, halal makruh. This is the default position of the majority of scholars. This is the Mufti of Saudi Arabia, the Mufti of Egypt, the Council of Muslim Scholars, the Majma' Fiqh al-Islami, the Head Kibar ulama of Saudi Arabia, Sheikh Ibn Baz, Ibn Jibreel, uh, the famous Faqih Wahab al-Zuhayli, uh, and uh, famous uh, Sheikh Yusuf al-Qardawi as well, that uh, he writes, for example, that I have never called for zawaj misyar, nor do I encourage it, nor have I written an article encouraging people, nor have I defended misyar, nor have I given a single khutbah about misyar. However, when I was asked about it, I had to give an academically correct answer that fit with my conscience, and I could not make haram what Allah had made halal just to make the people happy. And so I say that it is halal. I think it is halal, but I don't encourage it. So this is Sheikh Yusuf al-Qardawi, who uh, had to issue a statement when people sir, were saying that, oh, he's encouraging misyar. He issued a disclaimer, no, I have never encouraged. In fact, I don't like it, but I cannot make haram what Allah has made halal. So this is uh, Sheikh Yusuf al-Qadawi's uh, position. On the other hand, you have a group of some very famous ulama as well, who said that the marriage is haram, such a marriage is not allowed. And some have said that it is a sinful marriage, but it is valid. So it's not just makru, but it is haram. Some have said it is batil, and some have said it is fasid. What is the difference between batil and fasid is not the point of today's talk. So the Students of Usul al-Fiqh know this if you're not Hanafi. If you're Hanafi, there is no difference. But my point is that uh, a group of ulama said this marriage is not allowed. And you have some great names here, uh, Sheikh Umar Sulaiman al-Ashqar, uh, Sheikh Ali Qurradaghi, um, the muhaddith uh, of the last generation, uh, Sheikh al-Albani, that they all said that it is haram or batil or fasid that you cannot or should not do this marriage. And if you read their fatawa, by and large, uh, they are centering around the point that this type of marriage goes against the goals of the Sharia and that generally speaking the harms that result are greater than the goods that are obtained. So the dharar, the, the harm is more than the nafa or the uh, benefit. 